Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So today, I'm going to take you through three challenges I've had. One, an inverter that blew up. Two, a battery that got damaged in transit while it was being shipped. And three, a battery that did not, did not want to charge. So first things first, let's start with the inverter that blew up. So here is a day inverter. Can I have lights please? Put the light on. Here's a day inverter. Could you shine your light from your phone on there if it's bright enough? And if you notice in there, you see some burn marks. Uh, top of my leave this one. Yes, sir. See some burn marks. So, um, client called us very early in the morning saying that the inverter was no longer functional. And I personally think that the customer did something stupid and the inverter blew up. So, let me see if you can see back there. Well, first of all, let me show you what the board looks like. So you see it's very good quality um, components and then let me go back here somewhere um, can't really see it but let me see lift up on this one okay there we go um, bear with me hope I lift it up from this side from this side As you can see, evidence of some very serious fire. Um, they said it was the SPD. The SPD is underneath here, is what what caught on fire. So they're going to send us a new board, and we'll be replacing the board for this inverter. So let me discuss. Um, you guys are done. Let me discuss a little bit our experiences. When we had the Victron inverter go bad, we had to call. Um, we had to take it to a. Just put it down, put it down. We had to take it to a Victron um, wrap. And they told us, well, we have to talk to the factory, we have to do this, da 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 da. And then they sent us, it took about three weeks or four weeks. Four weeks, ever? Yeah. Took about four weeks, and then they sent us back a replacement. Um, when this went bad, I communicated with the Daya factory. They tried talking to the inverter. They actually had seen an event that happened. There's noise coming from nothing. Check and see why. Let me finish. They checked, they had told us an event had occurred. And we suspect that the customer had done something really boneheaded. Because he wasn't feeling, he wasn't his normal blustery self. And he was willing to wait for us to get to the bottom of the problem. The factory tried to flash the inverter, the inverter wouldn't flash. Um, all the lights were on, all displays were on, but the inverter was not responding to anything we were doing to it. So eventually, we removed, they asked us to open it. We brought it back, then they asked us to open it. We opened it, and when we opened it, we saw those burn signs. So we sent them pictures, and they said the SPD was what had, what had gone, you know, what had gone kablooey. And they asked us if we had used um, surge protection. We usually put some form of protection, but this one is a very rare and unusual failure. And until the customer actually comes clean, we're going to assume I don't like them. We're going to assume that the customer did something extraordinary to get the inverter to blow up. Um, they've promised to send me a replacement board. They asked me for the serial number, I gave it to them, and boom, they're sending me a replacement board. As soon as we get it with instructions, we'll fix it. So here's another, so that's how the Chinese obviously seem to do with customer service. They're more responsive, they put you in direct contact with someone who can help you, and that direct, that someone um, takes you through the steps, and then they make a decision, they make a decision and they send you a replacement part. Um, here's my Wico battery. You can see there's damage to the corner of the battery. Um, when it was being shipped, somewhere, somehow, someplace, the damage occurred. Um, when I approached, this was not, this was my first set. The second set, there was even more damage to the enclosure. They all had dents, and their response was, "Well, we shipped over twenty thousand. We shipped over twenty over twenty thousand batteries. Yours was the only one that had some damage." Now we also have the same issue with our diners. We brought in some diners batteries, and we brought in some diners batteries, and there was damage to the. Where was the damage? There was damage to the. One of the communication ports yes. and the breaker had failed. Um, as you could see, there was a little bit of a dent on the enclosure. So when I sent the picture to them, they apologized. They asked me for the serial number. They said, well, we did a QC test, a QC check, and these batteries were fine when we sent them from the factory. Then they had a conversation among themselves, and they sent me back images, and they circled it saying, 
during shipping, um, the battery modules moved and the movement was what broke the breaker and jarred off the broke the communication communication port. Um, please send us pictures. Send us pictures of the box we shipped it in. Send us pictures of the inside. Let's do a post mortem and find out what we are doing, what we're not doing right, and see if we can improve on the packaging. Difference. I shipped twenty thousand, and I shipped twenty thousand, and you're the only one complaining. Or oh, we're sorry. Send us pictures. Let's see what we can do to avoid this from happening in the future. We're going to send you replacement uh, breakers. We're going to send you a replacement um, communication port. We're also going to send you a card so you can communicate with the, with the battery to make sure everything is fine and you'll be able to do firmware updates. Are there anything else you need from us? And that's from Dynas. So you see the difference between Chinese and the European and the Europeans. Victron also has a, a, a system where you cannot call anyone to speak to them, but there is a forum. If you communicate on the forum, when the guy is available, he'll respond to you on the forum. Then he gives you a WeChat number, assigns you to tax, and those tax talk to you in real time. So, difference between the Europeans and the Chinese. Okay, and now I wonder why China is eating everybody's lunch. This is the reason why they're eating everyone's lunch. So, part three. So, I've done part one, part two, and now part three. My battery that wouldn't charge. So, um, we had initially installed, we came, it came as an F50 which had two B4850s inside. Then I added a third one and that third one the system didn't see it. Obviously the BMS wasn't communicating with it. Even though we saw lights flashing, it didn't see it. So we asked for instructions from Dynas and Dynas gave us very specific instructions as to how to do the installation. So we added a fourth one. So now we have 10 kilowatt hours in this battery. And the first day we installed it, we didn't get that much sunshine. Actually, it's been very cloudy of late, and the battery ran down to some absurd low voltage. Next day we charged, same thing happened. So let me show you what I noticed. Um, these batteries have something in common with lead-acid batteries. They can tolerate overcharges, unlike your um, lead, unlike your lithium, regular lithium-ion batteries. They do have a little bit of electrolytes in them. And like a lead acid battery, you need to get to a certain charge in order for it to have any meaningful capacity. So I'd seen 75% um, and by the next morning the battery was dead. I had seen some, you know, I seen some high numbers and by the next day the battery was dead. So look at this number, see the voltage right here? That voltage is very important. If your battery is not seeing at least 50 volts, when you're charging, you know, in the high 49s to 50 volts when you're charging, you don't have any capacity in the battery. And I found that out the hard way. So, this I think is a 15S. So, 15S at um, 4 volts, 4 times 520, 4 times 1 is 60 volts. So, we're not even getting anywhere near 60 volts. I think um, Dynas is charging their batteries to 3.4, 3.5 volts to keep them relative, to give them long life. And also they are minimizing this charge to, I think, the high twos. We are keeping it between three and three and a half. That's where we're keeping it right now. And um, for us, but however, like I said, there are two things that need to happen. One, you need to see that 50 volts at least once a week. And two, the BMS in this system needs to be fully charged at least once every other week or once a week for you to see true cap capacity of the battery. So you need to fully charge the battery for the BMS to recal recalibrate and show you what actual cap what true capacity is. So two days ago, I got it to 96% or 97%, and I actually got real capacity around the AC, around the fridge and freeze all through the night, and woke up with over 60% left, or seven, about 70% left, which, is, which means I took a little under three kilowatt hours out of the battery. And then the, yesterday, we barely got any sun, we struggled, but I ran the AC through the night. I turned the freezer off, but kept the fridge on, and woke up over forty percent this morning, which, which still sounds about right. Right now it's cloudy. The sun comes and the sun goes. Let me see what I can see. What we're producing, the sun comes and goes. Right now we're pushing fifteen thirty-seven. My AC is on, so we're consuming eight sixty-three, and that means uh, five fifty-three is what's going into the batteries. Um, Today, I hope we see in the high 90s, maybe 100%. 
if you see 100%, I'll be a very happy camper. As you all know, um, I run my system 100% of the grid. I'm not connected to the grid and I do not have a generator, so I live and die by sunshine. Uh, this is a little trying time because it's the second rainy season, so we don't get enough sun to charge my batteries. And now my battery bank is much bigger. I need to increase my solar panels to compensate for those days when we don't have enough sun. So if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you're yet, if you're yet to subscribe, I think I said click subscribe. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Okay, once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. And a few of you that have met me or spoken to me on the phone, like the fact that I say this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So thank you so much and I'll continue to say it.